Hello everybody, I'm Claudia, I'm the Executive Director of uh, Wikimedia Austria, and this is... Hi, I'm Philipp uh, Kapetsky, I'm a board member of Wikimedia Austria. Okay, do you want to start? okay I'll start. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, welcome to this uh, session about um, the trials and tribulations of Wikimedia Austria. Um, it's a bit of a, like a retrospect on the last 10 years of the organization, and also like um, trying to explain what we did in these 10 years to get to the point where we are now and like maybe um, suggest some some options you have with your own problems in your organization because like um, as we've seen in the last few years like some of the problems are very similar in, in many organizations in the Wikimedia movement and um, I guess like we've managed to solve some and are still working on other ones so just to give you a short overview of what Wikimedia show is right now um, it's about it's nine years old at this point. Um, it has employees in office since 2012. Um, it has about 150 members and it's growing in its membership. Um, we have 2.75 full-time employees, which is basically a nice description for three employees, and um, 10 board members, which is quite a lot. Um, and we also have a budget of 325,000 euros at this point, like 2017. Okay. Um, yeah, that's where Claudia comes in again. Yeah, so one quote that always comes in my mind when I um, witness the suffering of communities or be part of like some of the tragedies we um, are encountering is um, that quote from um, Anna Karenina where um, Tolstoy wrote, um, happy families um, are all alike, but um, every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. Um, because I think sometimes for us it feels like that, like this is like this communities are, are almost feels like family to many of us, and um, these uh, conflicts take a lot of um, emotional um, toll on all of us. Um, but I think the good news is that um, this quote is not so much true for organizations. Um, there are actually patterns of unhappiness that we can learn from. Um, and as Philip said, like a lot of the things, um, it's not only us or our communities that go through that. Others have been going through very similar phases before that and others will come after us. And I think what we can probably get better uh, at is like talking about it and helping each other through these difficult times um, and um, try to apply the learnings I'm on our um, own um, situation to make it probably a little bit more smooth. So one way to look at it, um, uh, one of the more popular um, concepts in organizational development is from Glasel and Liefgut. Um, and um, that's actually something that fits very well to um, a lot of journeys I saw in the movement from various organizations, including Wikimedia Austria, that you have these four phases, like so-called pioneer phase, a differentiation phase, an integration phase, and an association phase. I'll explain a bit more what every single one of that means later. Um, and they're not always very clear cut, like some of them are parallel, sometimes you jump back to the pioneer phase at something, so it's, it's not a very clear cut process that necessarily goes exactly very clearly in these four stages, but um, a lot of um, the patterns for each of these phases um, can be applied to situations we are facing and challenges um, a lot of our communities and organizations are ch um, facing, and um, what others did in this situation before might be um, a good indicator for um, things we could do to overcome the challenges in the various phases. And I have Philip um, introducing you to the first one. Okay, so the first phase is a phase you probably all know. It's about like you get to you get together the group and you just do stuff. And you do it quite as agile and flexible because like you have no rules and no process to actually um, like think about what you're doing. You just do it and and the end result is usually very, it's quite a positive outcome. Um, that also happened with me, Austria. Um, I've been editing Wikipedia since 2005, so I've been around even since before Wikimedia Austria existed. And um, Wikimedia Austria was at that point um, founded by a, a group of people who were mostly not in Vienna. So like most of the, the community in Austria is located in Vienna because it's, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty big city compared to the other ones in Austria. And um, the, 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 the chairperson is or was um, someone who, who uh, lived in Graz, which is a smaller town in Austria. So basically the essence of that is like the, the, the chapter was 
uh, founded by a few people in a, in a small group in a, in a city that wasn't like the main city in Austria. So you had like this uh, contrast between um, a big community in Vienna, which wasn't part of the, the chapter at first. And that led to a lot of, like, a lot of um, chaos in the form of, like, there was no lack of, uh, there was no transparency, transparency, so, um, in the sense that, like, this small group of board members knew what was going on, but outside of that group, no one actually knew what was happening in a chapter. And to be honest, like, a lot of people didn't care because there was no sense of, like, okay, what does the chapter, like, offer me as, as a, as a volunteer, like... I can edit Wikipedia without the chapter and um, there's no need for me to actually get involved in the chapter in the first place. Um, but what, the, what this small group also accomplished is like that they became very flexible and agile in like solving problems and, and um, com coming up with solutions. And that's basically what happened then is that like, okay, um, because there was a lack of tr transparency and it wasn't quite clear um, to a lot of volunteers what the chapter was about like uh, a strategy process set in which um, also came to the conclusion that like yes we need to uh, centralize the, the chapter and, and move it from, from the small city to the big city to attract more volunteers and, and um, address them where they are uh, living and not like in, in a small town and that also meant that like <clears throat> For that, the, there was discussion of like opening an office in Vienna. Um, another big important part was like because there was so much conflict in in this pioneer phase between certain groups, um, it was also important to include both sides in in some kind of role in Wikimedia Austria. Like, of course, one side was was not the dominant side, but um, they were also involved in a small way, and that helped also like um, solve a few. Um, problems in, in that sense. Um, what it did, didn't solve in this phase was like the basic problem of distrust was still there. So basically because of the lack of transparency all these um, suspicions and, and distrust escalated very quickly and that was felt uh, for, for years to come and the consequence of that was of course that like the, the, a lot of community members were alienated um, including me <laughs> which is interesting um, and it was really difficult to get them back again, but that actually worked as, as I'm living proof of that. And how that happened, um, Claudia will tell you. So in, in the next stage, um, that's um, basically where also I as a person came in, because um, one outcome of that strategy, that kind of half-forced strategy process um, um, that tried to address a lot of the pressure that built up in the community against the, um, the board of that time was to um, go into the phase of professionalization to hire staff that would also help to run that office that they wanted to um, set up in Vienna. So. Um, um, that's ex exactly um, what also um, is very characteristic of that phase that you actually try to build a controllable um, apparatus um, in your organization to increase the transparency that has been the, um, the issue for um, a lot of the problems um, in the past um, and introduce um, sound processes for coordination and controlling to um, define division of tasks between the various roles and um, people in your organization. Um, one of the um, the, the big um, challenges in that phase is to not overdo this um, and um, create some alienation by having too much separation of tasks so that people don't actually feel they're part of the same organic structure anymore or over-engineering processes and become too bureaucratic because as we heard before, like the flexibility is often like one of the big plus points of these um, smaller organizations that you actually want to retain. And... Um, so um, how did we deal in, in this kind of um, stage in the differentiation phase? So we established the office and we tried from the beginning to make it a neutral stakeholder that listens to all different parts of the community that has before been like in, in um, big uh, conflicts like the first general assemblies were really um, uh, quite a, a show, I must say. <laughs> and um, 
I'm also trying to make very clear um, how uh, we, we come to decisions about volunteer support, about mini grants, um, and, and, and other things, so that it's very transparent if you come to the, um, to the office and want something from us, what we can do, what we can't do, why we can't do things. So write down and um, define processes behind it to um, uh, regain that trust that was lost earlier. One of um, the, the things that were also important for me in the beginning was to clearly um, uh, draft um, the division of tasks between me as an executive director and the board on the other side, like, like how do we share responsibilities, uh, who is doing what. Um, and uh, we did that by uh, coming up with a good governance codex that um, set up some basic rules for how we work together and also defined what are the different roles and responsibilities. Um, uh, the problem here is that we actually were very aware of all the challenges um, in this phase and um, it was also very much cherished in Wikimedia Austria that we are so flex flexible and agile as an organization that we um, probably were a bit too eager to keep that um, and didn't really fully um, close that differentiation phase. So um, by trying not to be overly bureaucratic and not over-engineer processes, we re like now after a couple of years, we realize that this is exactly um, the root of some of the problems we are facing nowadays because we have some blind spots and gra a gray area still when it comes to um, the definition of processes and um, also responsibilities. Um, that we have to renegotiate now that people change because at the same time we also had a great stability in the board and also in the staff, which is nice. But once people start changing, you start also start realizing which of the um, things that you actually established were um, very well established or just the result of like that the people in their roles were reacting in a certain way and once you exchange the people, you start, that, um, start realizing that things are not as clear-cut as you would have thought. Um, so there's still um, a certain dependency of me being the executive director and um, other people being in the board. And once that changed, um, uh, it created some more unrest, which I will address in the next phase, which is the integration and association phase, which are we basically in now. So that came directly afterwards, a bit parallel. As I said, it's not always very clear cut. So um, this is still something that's going on at the moment. Um, that we as an organization become more holistic and embedded in the wider, in our wider context. So we're not only revolving among ourselves and our um, little world at Wikimedia Austria, but we um, increasingly started to cooperate with partners in the Wikiverse, but also outside of the Wikiverse by doing joint projects, by um, applying for grants with other partners outside of the movement to have joint funding. Um, to um, collaborate in the CE region, for example, is one of the big things that just happened uh, in the last couple of years that we feel part of this group and engage here, that the um, German-speaking uh, chapters uh, work together more and more. Uh, one very nice example is the volunteer support program that um, my colleague Raimund um, does with Wikimedia Switzerland and Wikimedia Germany, where they re really try to be like one face to the customer to um, have like the same rules in all countries, like that no matter where you come to, if you want to work on German Wikipedia, you have the same basic rules, like what I said before, that there's no intransparency on how you get support and why, and yeah. So... Um, um, what's still challenging in this phase are the human relation, as I said before, um, and uh, the context that um, comes when you uh, actually start mingling from the former core group with people from outside, which happens when you start to integrate yourself in, your, um, in the wider um, context. So um, as a result of the intensified cooperation we have now inside and outside of the movement, um, there are also trust issues we have to overcome because um, quite often um, there are some people that are more inclusionist in our communities and some of them are more exclusionist, um, sometimes for good reason. Like there's like um, There are some fears that are very well founded and you have to address them very, very early on if you try to bring together um, Wikimedians who have been working together for 10 years with people from outside the movement, especially when money is involved. Like if you have a joint project with joint funding, how does that work? So and these, these are currently um, some of the challenges we try to tackle um, when it comes to, um, be to becoming a more open and um, integrative and inclusionist um, organization. So um, 
these are all like in the end of the day these are all change processes right like going from one stage to the other stage um, is usually involved with change and um, if you think about like how can I bring about change or how can I um, how can can we um, effectively um, facilitate change there are also some models that help can help us um, to uh, shape the processes behind that like one one of the models that I find very attractive um, is uh, and it's also classic in organizational development is Levin's change model um, that actually just shows how you have an old structure that needs to be unfreezed so you can start moving things like if you think about yeah ice cream right like you take it out of the freezer you need to make it a bit more wobbly so you can make scoops out of it and then you freeze it again um, once you ha uh, have the change that you wanted um, and get a new structure that is valid for a while and might have to be unfrozen and changed after a couple of years because things uh, or context change, so it's usually not set in stone after that. Um, but it should be institutionalized so you can make sure it's not um, dependent on certain people in certain roles, but uh, um, a steady development in your organization. To make that a bit more clear, also like some of the challenge challenges we are actually facing right now at Wikimedia Austria um, is... Um, the whole problem of everybody does everything. So that's still something that comes from the very early stages that in the board, like why we had a good separation of tasks between um, ED and board, the board itself wanted to stay on top of everything, know about everything that's happening at all times. And now we just realize we're too big for that. It doesn't work anymore. And it's also not a good investment of everybody's time, like in calls, people, you know, do their laundry um, or, or other things. If there are topics discussed that they're just not interested or can contribute to. So it's not even their fault. So what you have to unfreeze here is um, that you have a few active people and a lot of bystanders and some of them would probably be more active if they had more chances to and a better idea of where they can be um, you know, useful and um, making a better use of our own resources. Um, it's also connected to diversity. So the stability we had in the last year also led to having like, not a lot of new ideas or influences in, in our structures. And um, now that we're increasingly involved in like the wider open movement in Austria, we realize that it's uh, definitely um, very helpful to have more diversity in our governance and management structures. So um, what we did is um, to raise awareness for this, which is usually a bit harder if, you, it's, if it's not forced. So a lot of times these changes happen by force, like either there's a lot of pressure from the community that blow up your general assembly, or the ED is fired, like we had all these things in, in the movement, and then it's easy because the need is there, you need to react. Um, it's harder when you're stable, like as nice as it is to have a stable organization like Wikimedia Austria, and I hear that from other colleagues like in the Netherlands and, and, and um, Israel too, um, it's sometimes harder or it takes longer to bring about that change because luckily we don't have that big eruptions, but at the same time it's hard to uh, get the awareness for, uh, into the people's heads that things still might need, have, need to change for us to survive in the long run. So you have to um, build alliances, you have to... Um, also build the right um, mindsets for people to um, explore new ways um, to do things and new behaviors. Um, and what we try to do at the moment, for example, is to um, we um, expanded the board, got new people in, people from outside with skills that we were lacking before, um, and also managed to um, get that idea into our community and into our, uh, our board. So we, we didn't have to appoint these people, they were actually elected. So I think that's something that was very helpful in that regard. And now try to separate this quite big board into um, uh, strategic um, expert committees for all the main focus areas that we are, um, we are facing right now. Um, and the next step that we are in already, but not fully, is like to refreeze these, these ideas, these changes that we have by changing the bylaws and um, by implementing and documenting these new decision-making and communication processes. And most importantly, and that takes the longest time, to also make it part of our culture, um, to have a more diverse and effective governance and management structure in the long run. Uh, okay. Microphone is, is it on? No. It's on. Okay, I'll just um, use this microphone then. So, um, from a more of a psychological point of view, um, 
it's always helpful to realize that like people are in certain stages of change usually like it also depends on topic of course but usually where you start off is like contentment like everything's fine the organization is working like in one direction um it doesn't mean that like everyone is content and doesn't do anything it just means that like everyone is focused on on doing the right thing and um doing the necessary stuff um but then you have the problem like when change comes um it's often difficult for a lot of people to accept that they need to change because, like, everything, go, everything is going well as it is. And that's where you come into the denial stage, which basically means that, or rule of denial, which basically means that, like, um, people won't accept, accept that there is a problem. Um, and the most successful way in that stage to get through that room is to um, present the people with the facts or, like, with the opinions of, of other people that say, yes, this is a problem, and yes, we need to deal with it. Okay, thanks. Um, and uh, you will realize in, in the Wikimedia movement, like, a lot of people are either in the contentment room or in the denial room, because, like, either everything's fine or there is no problem. And then, like, in, in typical Wiki uh, fashion, you have moving through the confusion room and the uh, renewal room is really easy and really fast because people just do it and there's no no big big confusion about what there is actually to do as as, as soon as you get through denial. Um, but basically, what confusion can also mean is that like there's way too much information out there to to make the right decision, and you have to cut through the the disinformation and the information that's not important to to your problem to actually get through that confusion stage. And um, renewal basically just means like yes, um, we know what to do, and let's just do it. And ideally, you get back to the contentment uh, room and, and start all over again. So that's a bit of a like a more of a psychological uh, approach to the whole thing. Okay, and that was it. Thank you. So we now have about like eight minutes for discussion. Eight and a half minutes. If someone wants to share. Um, can we, move on to the next? we can either move on. Just comment. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, I liked your presentation, uh, especially because uh, Peruvian batteries have a uh, uh, crisis of uh, such uh, organizational thinking, how to develop a movement, to develop a small community, so that an interesting uh, thing that we can maybe learn something or to learn more about these patterns that you write. So it's, I think that's amazing. I just tried to write something, but I understand it's better to follow your presentation after. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll upload the... You know, the to, uh, to ask about something, exactly, because uh, you need, I just try to understand at what phase we are, for example, on the first, uh, I think, and how it's to, uh, say, jump to another phase is also a question. Yeah, you might be in more than one phase too. Like that makes it confusing. Like some, it's not always that clear cut. I mean, some some people are on the one phase, and all the others are on the B or something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and what, what I can also recommend them when it comes to that, like if, if you see that there is a need to work on and like you like some of these concepts and um, do a workshop on it, like external facilitation helps a lot. So that's something I introduced as soon as I was there. General assembly, strategy meetings, if there are hot topics, get outside uh, facilitation. That makes things so much easier because everybody has a stake in there. So even if you have trained um, people inside your community, it's often not the best idea for some of them to, to facilitate like having a real neutral person who is also familiar with some of the concepts to help you work through through these things is something that's really helpful and I think you should always always be um, um, able to find some support and funding like quite often people do that pro bono like um, we have a lot of um, pro bono uh, consultants who work with us on, on these issues or from other chapters that's also something like you to be like but there needs to be somebody outside of the whole of yeah. your context. Yeah, somebody yeah. who has no stake in, in, the, in the whole thing and, yeah. and can like look at from the outside and like because the, in, in love conflicts the problem is like that both sides or a 
as many sides as they are, have, don't have the feeling that they're being heard by the other side. So you need like a, a neutral ground where everyone can, can state their interests and their problems and their concerns and then uh, move on from there. Cornelius? Oh, <laughs> and two, two thoughts in my mind. Like the first one is, um, I really liked your presentation. It was great, and I would love to see this uh, kind of written down because, like, only watching the presentation on online at home is a bit difficult to understand all the parts. And I don't know what would be the best format to share it first. Maybe a learning mm -hmm. pattern. But, uh, <laughs> I think it's a bit too complex. It's a yeah. bit too complex, but at the same time, second is how general generalizable it is, is that. Yeah, like this year you presented it uh, according to your Austrian case, and then sometimes I is it is it the European model? Is it the Western model? I don't know. I'm just asking. I'm, I'm thinking out loud. I don't know uh, if we can follow it <coughs> immediately, like in Argentina or Taiwan. That's true. Yeah. yeah, but I think in 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 Europe, like I, from what I witnessed from like the the organizations that have been around for a while, a lot of things follow similar patterns. So yeah, but true. And if other people have other like ways to structure their thoughts or their journeys, I think that would be great to have a, a selection of different ways to look and think about these things in the long run. So. Yeah, it also it also depends on like um, how many people you have in your community. Like we had like 40, 50 people in two thousand eleven, for example, who were actively involved in, in all of this. And that make like that's a basic uh, a very different situation than a lot of communities have. Like they're probably like eight to fifteen, for example. Um, uh, since uh, Austrian uh, Wikimedians share uh, the same playground with the German Wikimedians, uh, I mean the German Wikipedia, right? Uh, do you have uh, problems and big issues related to the content? For instance, are there people who, who want to, um, to approach to sue you for um, for things which were not? How, how exactly do you deal with content issues, legal issues? Is there some... Because, for instance, in Bulgaria we have Bulgarian language is, and Bulgarian Wikipedia and Bulgarian nation is... Like, like there's a bijection. But here you, you share with um, a bigger contributing community from another country. Uh, how, what are the legal implications for the chapter? Is there some? How do you deal with them? Are we talking about things like somebody wants us to take off things of uh, Wikipedia, or, or so? Because that's usually directed to the foundation at a very early stage. Like we have some um, standard answers that are also like often from like that we got from the foundation and translated them or something. So we're sending that out. Sometimes small things we try to help, like by finding volunteers. Um, usually people end up at Wikimedia Austria if they either live in Austria or if, if it's about Austrian topics so and that's when we do it and I think it's the same with, with the team in Wikimedia Germany so for smaller things we might help to find some editors who can resolve that before it blows up to a legal case um, if it's a bigger thing we direct it to the um, um, to the foundation because legally we are not responsible for the content on the Wikimedia projects so what we are uh, um, responsible of is like behavior of our volunteers so these are the only things like but that almost never happened so far that people got in trouble for things that they did like um, the only things that come to my mind since I've been there was like somebody photographed in a school and the school wanted to sue this person for, for reasons like um, and then we, we tried to um, provide some uh, legal advice uh, for this one because it did nothing wrong it was just like they found it suspicious that this guy is sneaking around in a school making photographs basically so but um, this is really um, the exception not the rule that we have this kind of issues so. uh, thank you also for my side for the presentation I found it very very useful and interesting um, and also plus one to what Cornelia said so how can we actually um, replicate this this approach also for other Affiliate and I, if you had like one tip or so or one advice for 
for people here. I would be interested in how did you realize that you needed that that you in which stage you are or that you needed to uh, uh, defreeze uh, and so on. You know, um, what raised your awareness of the issues and the problem and made you approach and tackle this? You know, because sometimes you are so deep into these issues and problems that you you don't find a way out. Did you have someone from ex someone externally that gave you advice, or did you just realize it yourself at some point? Do you want to answer? Or shall I answer? You <laughs> um, Well, usually, like uh, it. As I said, like um, for us, it's often if you compare it to fire, we don't have the big explosions. We have like these small fires where people uh, suffocate and not burn in the long run. And like I think the, <laughs> um, the, uh, the yeah, no, but like and, and and it's actually like it's a good question because like how do you realize? Because it's like small steps. It's not the big blow up or the big. Um, the, the, the big uh, conflict that wears everybody down it's like the small things that add up to something and um, so far we were lucky enough that um, uh, we always like had everybody come to a table when we realized like you know we, we saw some warning signs like people saying I, I'm stepping back from the board and and things like that and we usually use like this kind of red flags to say like okay let's get together let's have an in-person meeting let's not um, try to uh, communicate farther via email or, or online projects let's get together let's get a facilitator and let's get to the core of like what just happened like why why are people wanting to step back why do would people want to quit in one or the other way so trying to um, have some red flags um, and addressing them and not ignoring them that that's probably yeah, it's not a really good answer, but um, yeah. but rather sooner than later, bring somebody in, sit on a table, and talk. So yeah, that, yeah. But that's a good point. Like that's the most difficult uh, step in the like in the, in the room of denial is like actually seeing through the denial and seeing the, the, the threat itself. You know, that's like it happens with like when when you look at, at what Google does and like or like in our case like. Uh, Rockhouse or Encyclopedia Britannica just said, oh, Wikipedia, like, who, who are they? And, like, we don't need to change for that. And then they never got up the room of denial because they were, they were gone afterwards. Yeah. So, but I guess it's, it's important to pick up on small details that might, like, lead to, to problems in future and, and be aware of, of a lot of things. And, like, as, as Claudia said, like, when things get tough, people do come together and talk at one table, which is really like, uh, makes it way easier to deal with the problem than if uh, two sides won't talk to each other at all. Yeah. Yeah. all right. And perhaps like one last thing, um, strategy processes and risk management helps with that. Like for things that you don't anticipate yet, having regular like risk assessment, like what are the risks for us as a group or our organization <coughs> also help, helps to identify these things. So that sounds a bit more boring, but also. Okay, so time is up. Thanks so much Thank you. for your presentation.